gone shopping. I'll pick the kids up from school at lunchtime, and then I'll come home to get things ready for Jason's birthday party. Don't work too hard. I love you. Plans are coming along nicely. Should be finished by Monday. You're gonna knock me over. Uh, so this is your big day, huh? Am I grown up now? Hmm, ten years old. That's not exactly grown up, but you're getting there. Now, can I drive your car? And I think you're gonna have to wait a little while for that. <laughs> Ethan, can you please help me? I'm coming. I've already told you this today, Mrs. Mars. But I find you very attractive. You're not so bad yourself, Mr. Mars. I know what's on your mind, Ethan. But now is not the right time for it. Shame. I've really got to focus on this party. We'll continue this little conversation later. That's it, I'm free as a bird! Hey, five minutes, boys, okay? After that, we've got to eat, because your friends are going to be here okay, soon. Okay, we promise, Mom! This time, you're done for. You're going to pay for all your crimes, evil. Ah, surrender, weakling. Say your prayers. <laughs> Come on, Jason. Play up. Give up. I am victorious. Watch out. Oh. Attack, attack. Whoa. <laughs> What's up? It's Merlin. He's dead. 
he's dead and it's all my fault. No, it's not, Sean. Of course it's not your fault. I'd give anything if you could come back to life. You know, Sean, there's some things which just have to happen. Even if you don't want them to. It's not fair, Dad. It's not fair. I know. shoes for Sean. Can you watch Jason for a minute? I promise we won't be long. Sure, no problem. We're not going anywhere, are we, Jason? Come on, honey. Jason, you really shouldn't run her off like that, you know? There's an awful lot of people in here. Please, Dad, can I have one? I would really love to have one. Please, Dad, come on. Okay, let's go buy a balloon. Great! Hey, champ, what's your name? Jason. Which balloon would you like, Jason? Uh, the red one. There you go. That'll be two dollars, sir. Jason, wait for me. Wait for your dad, son. It's really crowded in here. Keep the change. <sighs> it is impossible to try on a pair of shoes with this crowd. Where's Jason? He was here a second ago. I bought him a balloon. I turned around and he just disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean, disappeared? Stay here. I'll go get him. I'll be right back. Jason! 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 The red balloon! Ow. Follow the red balloon! Ow. Jason! Jason! Jeez, God, you really had me scared. Shit. Oh, shit!
Hi, Sean. Hi, Dad. Here, Sean. Here's your snack. Thanks, Dad. Stop messing around or I'll never be able to film you. What do you want me to do? I don't know. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children had never been seen again. Let me have a look. Pretty good. Looks like you're done. <laughs> Off you go.
Hey, Dad, I didn't know you could juggle. I haven't tried it in a long time. <laughs> Do you think you could teach me too? Sure, I'll show you if you like. Thanks, Dad. Good night, Sean. Night. Dad? Yeah? Why do you look so sad? I think I just need some time. To get back to the way things were. You know, Dad, what happened to Jason wasn't your fault. Good night, Sean. What the heck is happening to me? I must be going crazy. Bells. Nope, can't say it does. Oh, that Lauren Winter. Third floor, last door on the left at the end of the corridor. Sorry, I only see clients by appointment. Wait. It's 50 bucks. I don't kiss and I don't do any weird shit. Fine by me. Put your money on the table. You got exactly 10 minutes when the alarm rings. It's over, okay? You should take your clothes off. We ain't got all day. Actually, I'm not a customer. Ugh, shit, a cop. I should have known. What do you want? A freebie? Is that it? My name is Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. The families of the victims of the origami killer asked me to investigate the murders. I came here just to ask you some questions about Johnny. I already told the police all I know and I have nothing to add. Leave me alone. The killer is walking around free as we speak. He'll kill again if he's not arrested. Hey, Johnny's dead, so what difference does it make? 
I understand, Lauren. I know what you're going through. Oh yeah? You know what it feels like to find your own son's body on a wasteland? I'm sorry, I don't believe you have the slightest idea what I'm going through, Mr. Shelby. If we don't find the killer, there'll be other mothers who find their son's body on a deserted wasteland. But, but, but you're right. Why should you care? It's not your problem anymore, right? What do you want to know? Tell me about Johnny. What kind of kid was he? Johnny was really a good boy. Sometimes he fought with other kids who called me a, you know. In his own way, I think he understood what was going on. How did your son disappear? He used to go play with the neighborhood kids after school. It was pouring down something awful that day. I'll never forget it. All his friends came home around five. All except him. You want one? No thanks, I quit. That's brave. Tell me about Johnny's father. A loser without a job who liked to beat me after a few drinks. He left the day Johnny disappeared. I ain't seen him since. Coward. Good thing he left. When did you sound the alarm? About eight o'clock. I began to get worried. I went all around the neighborhood. I went to the wasteland where they liked to play. I went to see his friends. I called the cops about 10 o'clock. Time's up, Mr. Shelby. I hope you got what you wanted. Now get out of here. Well, if you remember anything, the smallest detail, give me a call. What do you want, asshole? Lauren, is everything all right? She's just swell. Now beat it, loser! You again? If you're looking for trouble, you found it. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Oh! Call the cops! Troy, you call the cops! Troy, you call the cops! Go! 
I'll see you again, asshole. Are you alright? Better than him, I guess. Who is he? An ex-client who thinks he owns me. He was getting violent and I told him I didn't want to see him anymore. Well, you should be careful. He'll probably be back. Sorry about the mess. Mr. Shelby? Yeah. Thanks. Off, sir. Please step back. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. You got a badge or something, Mr. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Check. You can pass. I'm looking for Lieutenant Blake. Is he around? I saw him arrive earlier. He's here somewhere. Thanks. Video memo recording, Agent 47023, Norman Jaden, Tuesday, October 4th, 2011. Time is 8.14 a.m. Lieutenant Blake, I'm Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI. I went by your office this morning, they told me to be here. Now, if you're looking for rain, dead bodies, and highways, you come to the right place. Mike, can we tell that asshole with the bulldozer to stop for five minutes? I can't hear myself think here. Right away, Lieutenant. Well, are you coming, Jaden? Hey, Jaden, you come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. Harry comment, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. Superficial wound on the right thigh. Blood analysis suggests it could be post-mortem. Probably a scratch that occurred when the body was being moved. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. Ari comment, traces of blood on the railroad track. Analysis confirms it comes from the victim. Footprints continue just after the pollen trail. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Harry comment. There are traces of blood on the fence behind the railroad line. It comes from the victim. The killer came this way with the body and probably grazed it on his way through the fence. Harry comment. Tire tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. Maybe the killer's car. I think I've seen all there is to see. I'm heading back to the office. You staying? No, I've seen enough. I'm leaving too.
butterfly, a wolf's head, sharp blades, death, death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? I know he's disappointed in me. I'm not the father I used to be. He's a great kid, you know. He deserves better. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I feel sort of anesthetized, as if none of this was real. Sometimes I tell myself this whole thing is just a nightmare and that I'll wake up at any moment. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? No. No. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar. I just shut my eyes a second ago.
God, I'm bored. I hate having nothing to do. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. Oh, cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This? This is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Step one, change the office. Wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it.
Is everything all right, sir? No one. No one will see. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... 4.15. Yeah, that's it, 4.15. I remember exactly, because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Beige pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park, just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped, and... Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school. But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? <sighs> Sean is a sensitive child. Our relationship has been a little... Difficult recently. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? Uh, my wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they. do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say, but it is a possibility. Could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say.
Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa. I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you will please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything! Open the register, you dumb fuck! Put the money on the counter! Thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been well, here. This I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby! I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong.
How on earth did the fridge just open like that? Get it together, girl. You probably just left it open by accident. There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. I need to show it to the police.
Too many people. Too many people. Jason! Jason, Dad's here, son! Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad. Dad. Thank you. 
The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? It builds up a profile of the killer and helps us understand the person we're looking for. It might have been useful if it was done earlier in this investigation. Continue, Jaden. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square mile. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people living in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your fast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? I came here to find a killer, and that is exactly what I'm gonna do, with or without your fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, Less than 72 hours. No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist, that I'd come to Earth to persecute him. <laughs> Real twisted. Candles are still lit. He should be back soon. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. 
We just want to talk. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Why all the crucifixes? You afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he say Blake, to you, Nathaniel? what are you doing? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders That's you to enough. go and find Leave new prey, doesn't he? He needs more and more. No. No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. Carter, he told you to go shit. and find that kid you in the park. Your mind? The voices tormented you all night long. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop. Stop. That's enough. So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? Oh. No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I shall Nathaniel. dispatch you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy Shoot, us. For Christ's sakes, Shoot! Calm down, Nathaniel. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Put the gun down. Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power! I'm here to help you, Nathaniel. To get rid of the voices in your head. But you have to trust me. Christ all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Now gently put the gun down on the floor. Back away, slowly. Drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! In the name of the Lord, I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would've just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. Maybe not, but most of the time it helps. Sir, baby screaming inside. Not a promising start. Wait a minute. 
Bowles! Mr. Bowles, are you there? Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this wound with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Let's see. I need this. And this. And this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. <laughs> there, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Luckily, the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? You okay? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> I guess I better warm this thing up. Of course. Now I know why you're crying, my little peachy poo. Mother shall be to the rescue. Oh, Emily, are you hungry? Huh? You hold on. I'll just tilt this bottle a little bit so you don't jump. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Okay, all right. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. 
I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and... I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... There was just the cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah, my mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emma. I will. I promise. Good luck, Emily. You take care of your mom. Hey. Oh, huh. sorry, didn't see you. Uh, what can I do you for? I'd like to get my car. Hey, you're a pretty patient guy, you are. That car's been there for two years. We took it out for a drive every month and checked the tires and batteries, just like you said. Here, it's the third floor down. The service elevator is at the far end of the garage. Thanks. miles from here. Leave the parking lot and take the first right. have 
reached your destination. Are you ready to show your courage in order to save your son? Listen carefully. Take the highway and drive against the traffic for five miles. If you haven't reached your destination in five minutes, you will have failed. If I succeed, I'll get more letters for the hangman. It's my only lead. No turning back now. I've got to do it. For Sean's sake. I have no choice.
atmosphere here is one of concern, as there is still no news of 10-year-old Charles Hello there, sweetheart. What can I do for you? I'd like a room. For you? Anything. <laughs> Feeling the register. Madison Page 27 single how long will you be staying with us Ms. Page I don't know yet room 201 last floor stairs on the right in the courtyard thanks the pleasure was all mine that's for sure Sir? Are you alright? I'll call an ambulance. No ambulance. You're badly hurt. You need a doctor. Please, just help me to my room. It's number 207. We got the key? You're really in bad shape. You should see a doctor. Must have one, maybe two broken ribs. It's not fatal. <laughs> but it's sore as hell. <laughs> Your head is bleeding. It looks deep. I should disinfect his cuts. I'm gonna disinfect your wound. This might hurt a little. There. At least it won't get infected. Thanks. Here. Take this. It should do you what some is good. It? It's a painkiller. It'll help reduce the pain. It says on the box to take one every 24 hours. I don't think it's a good idea to exceed the dose. I can't afford to wait. I wouldn't move around for a few days if I were you. I, I'm gonna take a shower. All right, let me help you. I'll wait here until you come out. Let me know if you need anything. Talk to me. That way I'll know if you pass out. What's your name? Madison. Are you staying in the hotel? No, I live in town. I suffer from chronic insomnia. I seem to only be able to sleep in motels. Don't ask me why. Whenever I get too exhausted, I, uh, I come and spend a night here. I'm... I'm just passing through. And what else do you do, Madison? Apart from fixing up strangers. I'm a photographer. I take pictures of uh, furniture for fashionable design magazines. And you? I... I'm an architect. Thanks for staying. 
I feel a lot better now. Okay. I better get going then. By the way, you never told me your name. Ethan. Be careful, Ethan. Why didn't you shoot? Sorry? Well, back there, Nathaniel could have had a gun. Could have killed me. Why didn't you shoot? I prefer to have all the information before I make a decision. I try to make rational choices when possible. Come on, you had a fraction of a second to react. You could have whacked me before you had time to move. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were a tough guy. A street cop who's been through the mill. I didn't think you'd scare so easily. Why don't you fuck off, Norman? That's him. Miroslav Korda? Yeah? Lieutenant Carter Blake, I'd like to ask you some questions. Don't just stand there, he's gonna get away! Ah! Hey man, watch it! Ah!
This time it looks like we got our origami killer. You said I could contact you if I remembered anything. Can I come in? Sure. Let me take your coat. You want a drink? Yes, glass of water, please. Take a seat, I'll get it. Thanks. I just remembered something. Maybe it's not important, but a letter arrived in the mail the morning Johnny disappeared. A letter? What kind of a letter? It was addressed to Johnny's father. I don't know what was inside it, but he read it and then he left. That's the last time I saw him. And you think there's a connection between that letter and Johnny's death, is that it? Do you remember anything else about the letter? Well, I don't know why, but I kept the envelope. Oh, nothing particular. Except the address. The address? It was typed with an old typewriter. Could be a lead, you never know. Well, thanks for your help, Lauren. I'll let you know if it leads to anything. Wait, I... I can't just sit around and do nothing while you're out there looking for the man who killed my son. Ever since you came around, I've been thinking, and I... I want to come with you. Help you in your investigation? There's nothing you can do to help, Lauren. It's not a good idea. Believe me. If you won't let me help you, I'm keeping the envelope. It's all or nothing. Listen, an investigation like this is dangerous. And I don't have time to play the bodyguard. How many clues have you got, Mr. Shelby? This envelope. Maybe you're only linked to the killer. I understand. It was a stupid idea. Sorry for wasting your time, Mr. Shelby. Wait. You're really something special, Lauren. I'll give you that. I'm just a mother. A mother who wants to find out who killed her son. Are we partners? <sighs> We're partners. Maybe you better stay in the car. We're partners, remember? Wherever you go, I go.
Kramer. Shh, this is the best part. My name is Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I'd like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> I'd like to know exactly what happened to little Joseph Brown. Beat it! You hear me? Get the hell out of here! What do you want? A witness saw little Joseph Brown get in the back of your limousine. That was the last time anybody ever saw it. Now I know you've been arrested and interrogated until your father made a little phone call and the file was closed. I'd like to hear your version of the facts. The kid was lost. I just offered to drive him home. The police arrived, I explained the misunderstanding, and I was released. End of story. Nothing to get excited about, right? I don't know why, but your story just doesn't check out. You're giving me the crap now. Tell me something I can't believe. Very well. I'm the origami killer. I get my victims into my car. I drown them in rainwater. Then I dump them on a wasteland with an origami figure in one hand and an orchid on their chest. I do that because I'm bored, Mr. Shelby. And it's a creative and entertaining way of having fun. Is that good enough for you? Or do you want more? This interview is over. Get rid of this clown! It's a dangerous game you're playing, Kramer. Do you know who my father is? He only has to lift one finger and you won't wake up tomorrow morning. You're the one that should be afraid, Mr. Shelby. Not me. The origami figure was in the form of a butterfly. So, am I looking for a butterfly?
Glass. Broken glass. Sharp as a razor. Impossible to go back. I'm gonna have to crawl through it, slowly, so I don't tear up my arms. choice. Oh my god. Ethan. Ethan, can you hear me? That's all I can do. How do you feel? Ethan? He's unconscious. Now I'll just have to wait. And hope he wakes up.
How do you feel? Uh, uh, I've been better. Was I out for long? About three hours. Why the Guardian Angel Act? You don't even know me. You didn't really leave me any choice. I couldn't just leave you like that. <sighs> you said you were here because you're an insomniac? I, um... I've been going through a bit of a tough patch the last few months. It's the kind of stuff you prefer to forget. I do what I can to live with it, but, uh, it's not easy. That's the second time I've found you in a bad way. You always seem to be running for your life. What's happening, Ethan? You mixed up with the Mafia? Owe someone money? Something like that? Listen, I'm truly grateful for your help, but for your own sake, I think it's better if you don't ask any questions. Maybe I could help you, no I- No one can help me. You've already done a lot, Madison. Right. I'm gonna go. Take care. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't do it. I've got nothing to do with that business. I never killed nobody. Oh, no. Then why did you run away when they came to question you? I already told you I forgot to report to my parole officer. I didn't want to go back to prison. When I saw the cops, I just bolted. I wasn't thinking straight. We checked out his statement. He has an alibi for at least three of the murders. Fuck, that bastard was a perfect fit. Shit! Ash? Okay. Sean Moss's mother is here. She'd like to speak with you. It was a few months back. The middle of the night. It was pouring down. Ethan came home completely drenched at about three. I asked him where he'd been. He, uh, he spoke about drowning the rain. Um, he didn't make any sense. There was something. Something in his eyes. As if it wasn't really him. There may be no connection, but the next day there was that announcement about another victim of the origami killer. Find my son. I'm begging you. I'm Police Lieutenant Carter Blake. And this is Agent Norman Jaden of the FBI. According to our information, Ethan Mars is one of your patients. We'd like to ask you a few questions about him. I'm sorry, that's impossible. I beg your pardon? I'm bound by an oath of secrecy. Under no circumstances may I discuss my patients. My job is to find Sean Mars alive, and I don't give a damn about any bullshit oath. It's your duty to inform the police if you suspect one of your patients, Doctor. I'm sorry, I can't help you. And now I must ask you to leave. You need to cooperate. For your own sake. He's right. Legally, you gotta tell us what you know. Are you threatening me? I'm just giving you some free advice, Doc. I suggest you take it. I know you don't want to protect a murderer. If you know anything, you must tell us, Doctor. 
I am going to call the police and make a complaint about your behavior. Doctor, you are really pushing my buttons. The only thing I'm interested in is saving that kid's life. So, you're gonna be a good boy and tell me what I want to know or I am really gonna lose my temper. What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? Back Look, off, Jaden. Me. This guy knows something you, and I'm not leaving here until he tells no me what it right. is. Come on, Doc. There's an easy way and a hard way. It's your fucking choice. Ooh. What's up with you, Norm? How are you getting cold feet? You don't like to get your hands dirty, huh? I thought you wanted to save that kid! I want to save Sean Mars just as much as you do, but that doesn't give me the freedom to do what the hell I like, so you're gonna stop this shit right now! I'll get you for this, Jaden. Don't worry. I will not forget. Ethan Mars has had psychological problems since his first son died. Feels responsible for his death. A sort of morbid neurosis. He is haunted by visions of drowning bodies. A few weeks ago, after one of our usual sessions, I found this on the floor. It must have fallen out of his pocket. I want you to assign every available man to finding Ethan Mars. I want a man outside his place day and night. Notify all agencies to start looking for him. I want you to keep an eye on the train stations, the airports, the bus terminals. I want every cop in the city on his ass so that if he moves, we know about it. Yes, Ethan Mars is the origami killer. Nice shot. Thank you. Please come in, Mr. Shelby. Would you care for a coffee? Oh, no thanks. Do you play? I tried once, but I think the owner of the course is still looking for me. <laughs> it's an interesting sport. It requires strength, but also a cool head and absolute precision. Would you care to hit a few balls with me? There's no danger of damaging the greens here. Okay. Take off your jacket and grab a club. The balls are in that basket. Well, it's only your first ball. You should try to strike it a little harder next time. I'm assuming you didn't invite me here just to play golf, Mr. Kramer. I hear you've been asking questions about my son. That's right. I want to know if Gordy is linked to the origami killer case in any way. My son had nothing to do with that sordid case. Well, then he has nothing to fear from my investigation. You have no business investigating my son. I told you, he had nothing to do with it. With all due respect, Mr. Kramer, it's up to me to decide who I want to investigate. I'm an influential man, Mr. Shelby, and I pay very well for loyalty. 
Are you trying to buy me? Let's just say I'm trying to show you where your interest lies. How much do you want to leave my son alone? I think you misunderstood me. I don't play that game. Don't go near my son, Mr. Shane. If you do, you'll regret it. Have a nice day, Mr. Kramer. Are you prepared to suffer to save your son? You have five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. If you succeed, you will get your reward. Under the desk.
That's affirmative, Lieutenant. We're in position. Perfect. Nobody moves until I give this signal, is that clear? We nail him as soon as he sets foot outside. Right, Lieutenant. Lucky that patrol spotted his car. What's he doing in there? Beats me. You're the profiler, right? I thought you were supposed to be right inside the killer's head. Well, that's just it. What I know of Ethan Mars doesn't match the killer's psychological profile. I know what the jury's gonna choose between your theories and concrete proof. What the fuck is that girl doing there? Marsh comes out now, she's gonna be in trouble. What do we do, Lieutenant? You wanna get her out? No, stand down. Going inside. Maybe she lives there. Well, just as well. We don't want anyone hanging around if Mars comes out. Ethan, what happened? The police, they're out there. I think they're here to arrest you. We've got to find another way out. On my go. Stay here, Jaden. Out of the question. I'm coming with you. Two men at the door hold your positions. It's a go. Exiting the alley. A woman? Shit! It's that girl who went in! Everybody downstairs! They're in the alley! Follow them! The subway.
Less than an hour ago, we heard from the police who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan Mars, father of the kidnapped victim Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. I brought some food. I didn't know what you like, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. Why are you helping me, Madison? You know nothing about me. You could have been killed. I don't know. I guess it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. You needed help. I helped you. You were all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm... Someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards... Is the bodies. The bodies in the water. Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing me. Testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? And tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice! Please, Madison. Leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, leave. Leave me to do this on my own.
Your vodka, sir. Thanks. You look preoccupied, if you don't mind my saying so. Problems with the investigation? Blake is convinced that Mars is the killer. Not you. I thought there was some evidence to that effect. That's true. But it just doesn't make sense. His psychological profile doesn't fit. Neither does the geolocalization. I can't see this father drowning eight victims before kidnapping his own kid. Mars is not the origami killer. I'd stake my life on it. Then who is? I haven't the faintest fucking idea. Maybe you should review the evidence in your possession. That's just what I was thinking of doing. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you-know-what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm trying to keep a handle on it, but... that's difficult. It gets more and more difficult. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. The video recording from near the park on the afternoon Sean Mars disappeared. I doubt there's anything on it, but you never know. A Chevrolet model corresponding to the tire prints passed at 1602 heading for the park, when in the opposite direction at 1637. That could fit the time that Sean Mars disappeared. Could it be the killer's car? The car was stolen. Let's see. A certain Jackson Neville was suspected of stealing it. But the charges were dropped. Not enough evidence. Jackson Neville, aka Mad Jack, involved in several cases of buying and selling stolen vehicles. Considered to be very dangerous. This guy might have provided the killer with a car. It's a pretty slim lead, but it's all I have right now. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It could be dangerous. Very dangerous. Yes, it's... It's coming. Tryptocaine. The tube is on the bedside table. All I need is to take some, and the pain will go away. I should resist. This is gonna kill me. I know I can resist. I just need to stay in control and, and do something until it goes away. Manfred! Manfred! Anybody home? Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? S Scott? 
This is Scott. Oh, yes, of course. Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh, at my age, time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. How about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Well, this, this calls for a celebration. I've just the thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Hello? Yeah, this is Manfreds. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Well, to old friends. I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. Yeah. Let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter? Oh, sure, please? I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. Thanks. Well, let's see what this envelope has to say for itself. Hmm. The Royal Five. Hmm. Yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Hmm. Produced between 1907 and 1924. Yes. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. Are there many places around that could prepare one of these? I bought the company's entire stock of spare parts for a song in 64. Uh, well, they were going to take them to the dumpster, so I got the lot. <laughs> now, anybody around here who has one that actually works has been to see me at one time or another. Do you keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. At least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, if you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes and I'll be right back with the list. You think the killer's been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. Manfred. Hello? Your call is lodged, sir. A police car will be there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? Hello? Oh my god. He's dead. Oh. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. The killer has already called the police. I think he wants us to be a scapegoat. We gotta get the hell out of here. What do you mean? We have nothing to do with his death. We were just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. Well, 
So what do we do? Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints from everything we touched since we came in. You better work fast. The police are going to be here any minute. What are you doing, Lord? If someone comes in, we're going to be in trouble. These are Manhattan's account books. He must have been looking for owners of royals when he was killed. Forget it. We gotta get out of here fast. God, could it be much longer? The police will be here any second. I'm almost finished. That's it. We're done. You get all the prints? Got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from fighting us. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? I'm taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. We are partners, remember? We had a deal. Listen, Lauren, I know you want to find the killer. But you're not helping me by putting yourself in danger. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I've got to find my son's killer. You're not going to stop me. You're going to be a good girl. You're going to go home and let me get on with my investigation. Stop the car. What? Stop the fucking car! once again in my arms. What do you want? Oh, fuck it. I said a thousand times that I don't... Hey! Take it easy, man. Huh? Keep cool. <laughs> what do you want? Dope? Money? Tell me what you need. I'm sure we can make a deal, huh? Gosh, I'm gonna blow your brains out, you son of a bitch! You think this will come into my house and steal my dope? You'll be shooting up in hell, motherfucker! You stop fucking moving!
it, man. I give you whatever you want. Got dope? I got cash? You, you want some dope? Please. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. These are my girls, see? This one's Sarah. And a little one. That's Cindy. Please, man. I want to see them again. Please. Please don't shoot. <laughs> I'm a father too. But I have no choice. I got your information. And the owner of the apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. They used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Matt, be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get Betropin. Without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Uh, hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for Betropin, my dear? Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. I haven't seen you around here before. 
Who told you about me? I met a guy at a party. He popped some betropin. Told me he got it from you. Do you have many clients? A few. I help to ease their anxiety. Get my hands been off, thin enough, hard working enough. I reassure those who find the system too difficult. I'm like a safety valve that keeps society from imploding. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. You're not drinking? I am. Um, um, I'm, I'm not really thirsty. I'll get your prescription. It won't be a moment. Wait here. Surgical gowns? I thought he stopped performing operations. Must be some kind of a weird nostalgia for the past. We're gonna have some fun together, my darling. I promise. <laughs> ah! Say hello to Matthew. He claimed he had come to the census. Another one of those goddamn government spies. So, you're interested in my Marble Street apartment. I rent it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> to be honest, I don't give a damn. Just as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. But enough with the chit chat. I miss surgery, you see, so I take every opportunity to practice. I don't have any instruments here, so I use whatever comes to hand. I hope you won't hold that against me. Hold on, there's my stinger. Have you ever noticed, as soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling? I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Don't move. I won't be long.
What you doing in there? Nam and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? Yeah. I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, or whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from me. Sorry, ma'am. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory for me. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. <laughs> you trying to scam me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. Blood. Now why is there blood here? One of your cop buddies asking too many questions. I had to solder up his little mouth. Hands on your head, pig. I ain't got time to be playing around with you. Let's just get you out of sight and finish you off. Tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. Damn! You out of your motherfucking mind, man? Oh shit, Jack. Ain't nothing to it. Just a little bit of self-defense. Page one of the police manual. Kill or be killed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Enough. I'm starting to remember some things. You, you be cool. I'll tell you the tale. No, I don't know nothing about the guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car. Get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash, and I ain't the questioning kind. Said I was supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. We'll continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything. Shit, not now. Anything you say can and will be. Hey. <laughs> You look like you got a problem, man. <laughs> what? They letting you dope heads in the FBI now? God bless America. <clears throat> now I'm gonna give you a little help with your drug problem, Mr. Five-O. Permanently.
What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for Royal Machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients one by one, that's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list. The list of subscribers to Origami magazines. You still got that, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Lauren, wait. If the killer really used a royal typewriter and if he subscribed to an Origami magazine, his name should be on both lists. Well, Lauren, uh, I mean, that's just an assumption, but yeah, I suppose. His name is here somewhere. Help me, we're gonna find him. The only guy whose name was on both lists died when he was 10. What are you gonna do now? Dig up his coffin, make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't make any sense. Unless the killer was only using his name. But why use the name of a kid who died 30 years ago? Well, that's what we came to find out. The name is John Shepard. It should be on a grave around here somewhere. You never give up, do you? Excuse me. I'm looking for the grave of a boy named John Shepard. Straight ahead, a little further out. Thanks. Hey, Lauren. I found it. Origami figures. That's one hell of a coincidence. These flowers are fresh. Looks like someone's still tending the grave. Oh, youngin. That one I knew well. You knew John Shepard? I've worked this graveyard nearly all my life. I remember what happened. It was in 77, October. He's drunk again. What are we gonna do? It's pouring rain. We're gonna get soaked if we spend a day outside. Well, this won't get beat. A little rain never hurt nobody. Come on, let's go play. Bet you can't catch me! Whoa! <laughs> Play hide and seek. You go and count to 20 and try to find me, okay? John! My foot. My foot is stuck. Grab on! Up and out there! never did find any help, and his brother drowned in a pipe full of rainwater. 
The boy that lived, what happened to him? Well, all I know is he got separated from his parents. I, I think he got adopted. Well, looks like a storm's coming. I guess I better be getting home. Christ, what a horrible story. John Shepard drowned in the rain while holding his brother's hand. Do you think he... He could be the origami killer? Come on, let's get back in the car. What's the matter? That man over there. Yeah? It's Charles Kramer. Gordy's father? What's he doing here? He's putting flowers on John Shepard's grave. get into big trouble. Everything's gonna be alright. So, welcome to my little kingdom. <laughs> I'll take that. Just get in the way of good things, sweet cheeks. So, show me what you can do. Slowly. Take it all off. I'm sorry. Um, I, I think there's been a little misunderstanding. Look, look. Uh, I, I'll just go. 
No I harm done. Like Another time. I think it is you who have misunderstood, honey. I'm tired of wasting my time. It's now or never, baby. I never take never for an answer. Lamp. If only I could find some way to grab it. Oh, I know. But you go, girl. Okay, act two. Let's hear Lover Boy sing. <laughs> if you call out, I'll kill you. Got it? Shit. What you want? You rent an apartment on Marble Street. I want to know why. An apartment? I don't know what you're talking about. Ugh! You fucking bitch! I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> you haven't got the balls, lady. But you're gonna know balls when I gush up with you. Boss? Is everything all right? Yes? Where's Paco? <sighs> I'm sorry, um, he can't come to the door right now. He's all, um, tied up at the moment. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> ah! <gasps> If you value those prized balls of yours, Paco, then it's time for you to talk. Oh, ah, what you doing? Stop it! Stop it! I'm only getting started. How about some more? Ah, I never set foot in that apartment. I gave the keys to some guy. He said he needed a place. He had money. What was that guy's name? I, I don't know his name. I swear. Ah, ah. Uh, Shepard! His name is John Shepard! That's all I know! I swear it! Ugh. There, that wasn't so hard, was it? I really appreciated this romantic moment, but I got a dash. See you next time, lover boy. <laughs> There ain't no Paco here, fella. Get lost. Are you absolutely certain? He's in his office. Take the stairs over there. Don't fuck around, man. No. 
Now wait. I, I can still help you out. No. No. Don't kill me. during the fight. Two receipts from the same gas station. Interesting. Madison Page. What was the journalist doing here? Orchid pheromones. The fucking origami killer. Paco Mendes was no saint. His rap sheet reads like the telephone book. The killer was looking for something. A bullet right between the eyes. Instant death. A 45 caliber semi-automatic. 45 caliber. Gotta go. Need to think about all this. Ethan, are you all right? I... I killed a man. <laughs> I had no choice. I had no choice. 
You're not the origami killer, Ethan. You're not responsible for those murders. I can prove it. That changes nothing. Saving Sean is all that matters now. should have guessed. All this time and I had no idea. Ethan, what's the matter? I thought I meant something to you. Listen, I... You're a pretty good nurse for a fucking journalist! <gasps> Ethan, I, I, I wanted to tell you, but... What kind of article were you gonna write? My life with a serial killer? No, no, no. How I caught the origami killer. Maybe you'll get a book deal. I hope it was fucking worth it! Ethan, it's not what you think. I... You lied to me, Madison! All this time you fucking lied to me! I thought you wanted to help me, but you're only thinking of writing a fucking book?!
it's true. I'm a journalist. And I knew that you were the father of the boy who had disappeared, and... And I wanted to cover the story. But then I saw what you were going through to save your son. And... And I understood how much you love him. I wanted to tell you the truth, but I couldn't. I was afraid that you... that you... may not believe me. I was afraid that you'd ask me to go. All I want is for you to find your son alive. And when it's all over, I want to be with you. I'm sorry, Ethan. I'm so sorry. You're leaving, aren't you? It's the last origami figure. The last letters, then I'll know where Sean is. Take care, Ethan. I can't lose you now. I'm gonna go find something to eat. Wait for me, I'll, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Cops, they're looking for Ethan. It looks like a raid. Come on, what was the damn number? Come on! Pick up the phone! Hello? The cops. They're in the motel. You've got to get out of here.
Lauren? I'm sorry, Scott. You should have listened to me, Mr. Shelby. I told you to drop the investigation. Your son is a serial killer. How many people does he have to kill before you turn him in? Gordy has his faults, but he's still my son. You have no children, Mr. Shelby. You can't possibly understand. You leave me no choice. Your investigation is over. For good. I was going to take up swimming again. This isn't exactly what I had in mind. You got a car back at your place? Mine's obviously pretty fucked up. Yeah, sure. What are you going to do? I'm going to go settle a few scores. Come on, I'll take you home. Lock your doors and windows and don't let anybody in but me. Okay? Be careful, Scott. I don't want to lose you. Fucking asshole. Please. 
son killed all those kids, didn't he? He's the origami killer. No! No! He's innocent! He's not a killer! Not a killer! Oh. Oh. You're a fucking liar. Now tell me the truth. No! No, please! Don't hurt me! Last chance. I don't know. I swear. I don't know anything. Oh! oh. Stop! Stop! I beg you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. Uh, Gordy... Gordy always wanted his fun, you know? He wanted to... to be like the origami killer. He kidnapped that kid and... he held him under the water for a little too long. It was an accident. An unfortunate accident. He just wanted to play. He told me everything. He was crying. He was so sorry for what had happened. Whatever he did, Gordy... Gordy is my son. No one will miss him. What? That boy, Gordy killed. No one will miss him. The street trash, like so many others. Oh. You disgusting pile of shit. What about John Shepard? Why did you put flowers on his I... grave? I own the construction site where he died. I never forgot. I've been putting flowers on his grave for 30 years. John had a twin brother. What happened to him? I don't know. He was adopted, I think. His mother... His mother should know. Her name is Anne. Anne Shepard. My heart! My heart! Quickly! I need my pills! In that drawer! There! Shelby! Come back! Why are you? Come back! Hello, I'm looking for Anne Shepard's room. Please sign the visitor's book. Are you a member of the family? Yeah, you could say that. Oh, she'll be pleased to have a visitor. No one ever comes to see her. With the Alzheimer's, she has trouble remembering things, but it'll still please her, you know. It's room 19 at the end of the corridor. Thank you. Does Mrs. Shepard ever talk about her past? It's not all very clear to her now. Sometimes she'll remember the oddest things, though. I suppose if she sees something that reminds her of her past. Does she get many visitors? She's been here for ten years, and you're the first. Did she ever mention her sons? Sons? Well, she often mentions John. I, I think he drowned. Does she ever talk about her other son? I didn't know she had another one. I've never heard her mention it. Sometimes, if you show her things, it seems to trigger a memory from her past. You might get it to remember. Thanks for the advice. Hello, Mrs. Shepard. Is it time for my pills already? No, Mrs. Shepard, I... They're never on time with my pills. I don't know what they do here. In the other hospital, they were always on time. But here... I came to talk about your son, Mrs. Shepard. My son? I have no son. Did you make these origami figures? My little paper animals. 
They played with them for hours. I showed my boys how to make them, you know. Yes, your boys, Mrs. Shepard. John and what was your other son's name again? My other son? I only had one son, my little Johnny. Oh, you know how to do these little dogs, too. My children loved origami. I taught them how to do it. John loved the little dogs. He always wanted to call them Max. Max, Max, Max. All dogs with the same name. I was wasting my time telling him they couldn't all have the same name. But he always wanted his paper dogs Max. It's funny, isn't it? What a lovely orchid. My sons loved orchids. We used to grow them in the back. When John died, I laid orchids on his grave. Are these your children, Mrs. Shepard? John and his brother? Is that them? They're good little boys. Their father never looked after them, always drinking. They didn't have an easy life, you know. I cried when they told me. I'd already lost one of my children, and now they were taking away another one, you understand? The foster family, Mrs. Shepard. What was the name of the foster family that adopted John's brother? They were really very nice people. I met them, you know. In the beginning, I used to go and see my little boy. And then I got sick and I couldn't go any longer. Perhaps he thought I'd forgotten him. He must have thought I didn't love him anymore. His name, Mrs. Shepard. What was his name? But I loved him. If you only knew how much I missed him. Please, Anne. His name. What was his name? Come closer. The last origami figure. The last trial. The last trial. The last question. Are you prepared to give your life to save your sons? There is a deadly poison in this file. It will kill you in exactly 60 minutes. If you drink it, you will get the last letters of the address. You will have enough time to save your son and say goodbye to him but then you will die. You can drink the file or decide to leave. The choice is yours. I did what I had to, Sean. Your dad's coming to save you.
We've only got a few more hours left to save Sean Mars. There has to be a goddamn clue somewhere. It's probably staring me in the face. This kid's gonna die, and I'm going around in circles! All packed up and ready to go? What are you talking about? The investigation's over. We know who did it. We no longer need your services anymore, Norman. So you can ride your files all the way back to Washington. I'd be lying if I said I was gonna miss you. The investigation isn't over. You have absolutely nothing on Mars. Mars is guilty. Case closed. Anyway, it's no concern of yours now. You're off the case. So pack up and fuck off. Blake, you are an unbalanced, psychopathic asshole. I'll take that as a compliment. Honestly, I don't give a shit what you think. I found the origami killer. Everyone's happy. End of story. Have a nice trip back, Norman. The killer's name is here. Somewhere in this data, I just have to find it. Find it before it's too late. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Two receipts from the same gas station. Might be near the killer's home. The killer lives in this zone. 342 people live around there. Not good enough. Gotta find a means of identifying the killer more precisely. Ari was in record mode when I was fighting with the killer. Perhaps there's something on it. Gold watch. I'm sure I've seen this before somewhere. The watch they give for promotions to lieutenant. The killer is a cop. A cop. There's only one cop in that geo profiling zone. Gotcha. He owns a warehouse on the docks. If I'm wrong, Sean Mars is dead. Take a couple of days. Long enough to get this resolved. I can't just wait while you confront my son's killer. It's the only way, Lauren. Trust me. Now go stay with your mother for a few days. I'll come and get you when this is all over. Tell me who the origami killer is. I want to know who killed my son. Listen, when I'm done, I'll tell you everything I know. I promise you.
The water's rising. I'm hurrying. I'll be right back. Dad, Dad, it's John. He found your butt. Oh, He's get coming. out of here, you little pet. Leave me alone. Just come, Dad. Come on, John's gonna die. John's gonna die. Well, that'll be one less greedy mouth to feed, won't it? Go Please, away. Please, Dad, I'm begging you. John's gonna die. John's gonna die, Dad. Why did I tell ya? Crap. I tried, John. I really tried. But he wouldn't come. Please don't die, John. Please. Don't. Don't forget about this guy.
lost your touch, girl. The origami killer's apartment. There must be something that'll tell me where Sean Mars is. That's where the smell of burning comes from. Evidence going up in smoke. A cop's uniform. Always trust a cop. That's why children went with him. He was dressed as a cop. Shit, it needs a password. Got it. Max. The name John gave to his paper dogs when he was a child. What the hell is that? An address. It's gotta be where Sean Mars is. Hurry, there's no time to lose. So you found my little secret? It's over, Scott. All those children killed just to find a father capable of saving his son? Shut up! You don't understand. There's one child left. There might still be time to save him. Let him go. Do what your father couldn't do. I know where Sean Mars is. I've got to call that FBI guy, Jaden. 
He's the only one I can trust. He'll be able to save him. Mom and Jane. My name is Madison Page. You don't know me. I'm a journalist. We don't have much time, so listen carefully. Ethan Mars is innocent. The killer's name is Scott Shelby. Sean Mars is at 852 Theodore Roosevelt Road. Have you got all that? Wait, I know this already. I'm on my way to the warehouse. I gotta go. Looking for a father that would be able to do what mine could not do. Sacrifice himself in order to save his son. <laughs> oh, I searched and searched and searched. And then I remembered you. All those murders, just to find a father capable of saving his son. Just to find a father? Do you have any idea how it feels to be a worthless nothing in your father's eyes? Believe me, I've suffered. Just as much as my victims. I finished your damn trials. Now give me back my son. He's there. All you have to do is open that grate.
suspect is likely to be armed and dangerous. All personnel are ordered to shoot to kill. I repeat, shoot to kill. Ash, are the snipers in position? Yes, Lieutenant. They're ready on your command. Perfect. He won't get away this time. We'll gun him down as soon as he shows his face. Hey! You there! What are you doing? Lieutenant, my name is Madison Page. I'm a journalist. I have proof that Ethan Mars is innocent. He's not the origami hey, killer. What is a journalist doing here? I thought I told everybody to keep their mouths shut. Now get her out of here. I don't want her getting in the way. Okay, Lieutenant. All right, come on. You're about to make a terrible mistake, Lieutenant. Ethan Mars is innocent. I can prove it. Oh! Gotta breathe. Don't leave me. Sean, don't. don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Sean. Oh, oh, I thought you were gone. Dad. I knew you'd come and oh. save me. Oh. Sean, listen. You are the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I want you to know that whatever happens, I love you more than anything in the world. I... I'm not dead. I took the poison an hour ago and... And I'm not dead. Ash, get her out of my face. Mars didn't do it, for Christ's sakes. He's innocent. Hey, what are you doing? going on? The cops. They're out there. They have the building surrounded. They'll shoot you if you go outside. I'll go out alone. I'll talk to them. I'll explain. You'll be dead before you can open your mouth. Look, we'll all go out together we'll, with, with our hands in the air and they can't possibly shoot us. I have the evidence that proves your innocence even more. Listen. I'm sorry I didn't trust you. I was only thinking about Sean, and I thought... That's okay. The only thing that matters is that you saved your son.
was general relief this morning when the police announced that they had found Sean Mars alive more than four days after his disappearance. Mars had been imprisoned in a well by the man known as the Origami Killer. The successful resolution of this case was made possible only by the bravery of Ethan Mars, who the police believed at one point to be the killer. It is no doubt due to his great courage and tenacity that he succeeded in foiling the plans of the Origami Killer. The police commissioner presented him with an official apology today. Our main headline today, it is reported that the police have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Scott Shelby, 48, is a former police lieutenant who claimed to be a private eye hired by the families of the killer's victims. Shelby was killed during a massive police operation, but further details have not yet been released to the public. Let's just say a friend of a friend let me jump in line. If we like it, it's ours. Hey, Dad! I think I found my room! Well, what do you think? It's perfect, Ethan. We'll be able to forget what happened. We'll lead a normal life. And one day, it'll all just seem like a bad dream. We've earned the right to be happy now, Ethan. All three of us. cover of today's World Magazine this week, and has been hailed by the whole nation as a new hero for our times. Astonishingly, he almost single-handedly ended the sinister series of killings by the man known as the Origami Killer, and saved the life of young Sean Mars. His determination, courage, and intelligence have won our admiration. Norman Jaden. <laughs>
You killed my son, Scott. Were you thinking about that when you held me in your arms? I don't know why you did all this. Nothing can justify it anyway. I feel nothing but contempt for you. Nothing but contempt. I want to see them again. I'm a father too. 